My name is Alicia, and in this week's live lesson, we are going to talk about how to talk about your schedule and make appointments. In this week's live lesson, I'm going to cover a few different grammar points, and we're going to talk about how to put sentences together. So how do we combine grammar points uh, with short connecting words, conjunctions? So we're going to practice doing this today with some simple grammar points, and then we're also going to talk about some expressions you can use when making appointments and making reservations. So I hope there's a lot of good stuff in here, especially for making longer sentences, putting your ideas together. Okay, so as you join, please, 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 please make sure to hit the like button and of course share this video so that other people can find today's lesson. That would be super, super cool. As we wait for people to join us, a couple of super quick announcements. As always, the first thing is about this banner at the bottom of the screen. It says, test your level now. If you have not checked this out, the team has created a level check test for you. If you want to check your level, if you want to get some ideas for what to study next or what do I need to focus on next, you can take this free test our team has created. You need your name and an email address to access it to make a free account. It is totally free. So do that. And then on this page, you can go down uh, to this one, two, three, four step section to see how to get started. After you take the test, you will get a recommendation. So you will get something that looks like this and you will get some recommendations for what courses or what paths to take on our website. So I hope that that helps you to get some ideas for uh, new things to study or your next step, your next level. So check this out. It is below the video on YouTube or above the video on Facebook. So please have a look there. Uh, the another, let's, the next announcement, next announcement, as always, if you have questions for me, this is announcement number two, if you have questions for me, please send them to me on the official question submission page for this series, the Ask Alicia series. This is a weekly question and answer series. You send me questions and I maybe <laughs> answer them. When I say maybe, maybe I'll choose your question. Maybe I'll answer your question. I hope I do. I do my best. But you can find the official question submission page for this at englishclass101.com slash ask hyphen Alicia. That's very long, so there's a link in the YouTube description. Please send your questions to the official question submission page. Don't send them on Instagram or on Facebook comments or YouTube comments. There are so many comments every day. I cannot read them all. It's just too much. I have four. A job to do. <laughs> so please send them to the official question submission page. I will definitely see your question there and maybe I'll choose it to answer. So please make sure to send it there. Also, if you want to find me on social media, on Instagram or on Twitter, you can find this uh, in the YouTube description also, a link. Okay, cool. I think everything is rolling. Hi everybody. Facebook, what's up Facebook? Hello Rosa and Rojas and Alem. Hello. Emblem, it's Alicia. Yes, it is indeed me. What's up? Hi. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. And YouTube, are you also here, YouTube? Yeah. Uh, Nelson and Thu, hi. And Miguel and Oscar and Hugo, hello, everybody. Welcome. So, uh, if you haven't, please make sure to hit the like button and share this video. I'm doing it right now. And then we're going to start today's lesson. So, if you missed it, today's lesson is... Here is today's lesson title. Today we're going to talk about how to talk about your schedule and make appointments. So let's uh, let's look at today's lesson boards so you can see kind of the flow for today. We're going to combine some grammar points today uh, after we review. So today we're going to start uh, point one and two uh, with a grammar review, simple present tense and simple future tense. Then in part two, we're going to practice connecting sentences. So we're going to uh, put ideas together uh, and I'll show you how we do that in the most basic way, okay? And then in point, or uh, yeah, part three, we're going to talk about appointments. How do we make appointments? Uh, what are the expressions that we use to do this? Uh, and what are some interesting points about these kinds of expressions, okay? So let's get into it. Let's start with part one one and if you haven't make sure to like the video because it helps others to find the lesson okay 
let's go. So point one, let's do some grammar review, some basic grammar review. Today I'm going to focus on these two uh, grammar points to start. They are, they are simple present tense and simple future tense. So first, let's review these grammar points. You can send some examples in the chat. Uh, and later, we're going to talk about how we put them together. So first, review. Simple present tense. We use simple present tense for these three things. We use simple present tense to express schedules and timetables. Schedules and timetables. So the start time and the end time of something or for like a bus or airplane or a train. What time does it leave? What time does it arrive? So we use simple present tense to express our schedules and our timetables. Okay, second, we use simple present tense to express our habits and our regular actions, our regular actions. So what do you do every morning or once a week? Those things we do every week or every day or every year, we use simple present tense to express those, to express those regular actions, okay? Third, we express general facts with simple present tense, general facts. So things that are always true. For example, she speaks Spanish is a general fact, right? Okay, so we use simple present tense to talk about these things that are always true or they're regular or constant, okay? For example, three examples here. If you want to send an example in the chat, I will try to check live. So the train leaves at 2 p.m. The train leaves at 2 p.m. So here is my simple present tense verb conjugation. Second, the bank closes at 5 p.m. The bank closes at 5 p.m. Here's my verb right? And one more, he finishes work at six, okay? So these three, I'll use this uh, it, right, this it grammar point. So remember, when you use an it subject, the train, the bank, or he and she, we need to put that s at the end. That's one very common mistake I see with beginner level learners, okay? So we express these timetables and schedules habits, regular actions with simple present tense. So things that are always true or things that are true in the schedule, okay? So let's use this. We're going to use this today, this grammar point, together with simple future tense, okay? So let's, <clears throat> let's review this grammar point now. Simple future tense. When I say simple future tense, I mean using will or won't, will not, in the negative, and going to, right? So we have these two that we use to talk about the future, yeah? What's the difference? Here's a reminder. So will, we use will or won't for decisions made in the conversation, a decision made in the conversation right now, and it's not 100% sure or it's a guess, right? So something we're thinking about, something we are deciding right now, kind of a guess feeling with will, okay? Or we just made the decision. <clears throat> On the other hand, going to. Going to is a decision made before the conversation. Our plan from yesterday, our plan from this morning, our plan from last year. We made the decision before the conversation. The plan is 100% sure. I'm definitely gonna do this thing. So let's look at some examples. All right, so examples. I'm going to go to the station at one. I'm going to go to the station at one. Here's my going to and my verb. I'm going to go to the station at one. This is a decision I made before the conversation. It is 100% sure, okay? Next. I'll probably leave the office at 4.15 today. I'll probably, right here is my will, yeah? This is the reduced form. I'll, right here, I will. I'll probably leave the office at 4.15 today. So I'm making a guess about this, or I'm saying, this is about what I think. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm saying I'll probably, there's a good chance of this. 
Okay? Cool. All right. So last one here. We're going to go to dinner at 7. Oh, it's noisy, sorry. We're going to go to dinner at 7. Again, I have my going to here and my verb go. Same as this one, right? We're going to go to dinner at 7. So these going to sentences are decided, right? We are 100% sure about that plan. This will sentence sounds less sure, okay? So today I want to use these two grammar points together to talk about schedules, all right? Okay, so I'll take a minute and check your questions and comments. Uh, some people wrote some simple present tense sentences, good. Uh, Zezo, the plane arrives at nice 3 p.m. Okay, Juan says the mall opens at 10 a.m. Nice. Nohora says water boils at 100 degrees. Uh, Nelson says I'm taking notes. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, Zezo, I'm going to play with my friends. I'm going to play with my friends tomorrow. Okay, other people. I'm trying to check many people. Uh, let's see. On Facebook, what's up? Um, I'm going to take a shower at noon today, says Emblem. Good. Okay. Uh, good. That's all I see for examples on Facebook and YouTube right now. So we're going to use these two points and put them together. Okay. We're going to put them together in part two. So let's take a super quick break and then we'll move along to how to connect these with coordinating conjunctions, some writing practice. Yeah. So if you missed it very quickly, I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this test your level now banner at the bottom of the screen. If you want to check your language level. The team has created a level check test. So take a look at this. You can find this from the link below the video if you're watching on YouTube or above the video if you're watching on Facebook. There's a link you can check there. If you go up, you can log in. If you have an account at EnglishClass101.com, you can log in right here. If you do not have an account, it is free. The test is free. You need your name and an email address. So check this out here. Oops, here is a one, two, three, four step uh, guide if you need some support uh, to get the access to the test. And then you will get a recommendation for some uh, tests, uh, for some courses and some lessons that you can take uh, from our website. You can find more of my videos there. So check it out. It is free. It is below or above the video. So I hope that that is helpful for you. Okay. All right. Let's continue to part two. Uh, how do we connect our sentences now? This is a question I get a lot uh, from learners. How do I write long sentences? So today I'm going to show you the most basic way to put two sentences together to make one really long sentence. Okay. So if you're just joining, we are talking about how to talk about your schedule and make appointments. Let's go now to part two. So part two, connecting sentences, connecting sentences. So we practiced two grammar points in part one. In part two, we are going to practice putting them together, connecting them. Okay. So to do this, we need to learn one more uh, very important point here. So we connect two simple sentences with a coordinating conjunction. Coordinating conjunction is our key word here. What is a coordinating conjunction? You might think that's a big word. That's a big phrase. I don't know. <laughs> but coordinating conjunctions are these seven little, little words. They're very small. They are for and nor, but or yet and so okay if you some of you might know you can use the word fanboys to remember all of them f a n b o y s fanboys so these are called coordinating conjunctions so what does that mean that means that we can use these words to connect our ideas okay we can use these words to connect two simple sentences Simple sentences. What is a simple sentence? A simple sentence has a subject and a verb. So this is the most basic form. A simple sentence can be, I ate, subject and verb, right? Or he sleeps, subject, verb, right? These are simple sentences. A simple sentence is the most basic sentence in all of English. It can be two words, right? 
So we can connect two simple sentences with one of these words. And these words show us a relationship. Okay? So most of the time in today's English we use and, but, or, yet, and so. For is like saying because, but it sounds a little old fashioned. And nor is like saying uh, not. Mm, so also not something. Today we're going to focus on and, and but, and so to connect our ideas. Okay, so let's use these and let's break down what's happening uh, so we can understand how to create these long sentences. So let's take a look. Let's look at the sentences we made in part one to connect them. Okay, first, the train leaves at 2 p.m. So I'm going to go to the station at 1. The train leaves at 2 p.m. Simple sentence, yeah? Subject, verb. And then we have this prepositional phrase at 2 p.m. Okay, so here's simple sentence one. The train leaves at 2 p.m. So, <laughs> okay, so this expresses cause and effect or a reason for something. Right? So, I'm going to go to the station at 1. I'm going to go to the station at 1. Here is my next simple sentence. I'm going to go. So, this is my verb, go, and my subject is I. I am going to go, right? So we have two simple sentences here. Yes, we have a little more information to the station, prepositional expression, and another prepositional expression here, at one, but they are both simple sentences. We connect with a coordinating conjunction, right here, this guy, so, okay? So this is how we put our sentences together, the most basic way to do it. Okay, let's try another example. You can send your long sentence examples in the chat. Just put your two simple sentences together with one of these, okay? Let's look at example two. He finishes work at six, and we're going to go to dinner at seven. He finishes work at six. Simple sentence, right? Finishes. He finishes. So here's my subject and verb. In this case, we have, again, more information, but the basic form of the sentence is still just a simple sentence. He finishes work at 6, and we are going to go to dinner at 7. So, I connected this simple sentence. We're going to go. Here's my subject and verb, right? We're going to go to dinner at 7. So, you can see these times at six, at seven, at two, at one, whatever. These are just like prepositional information. We connect with the preposition at. So these are part of our simple sentence. It's very, very common to have a preposition like this at the end of our simple sentence or somewhere in the simple sentence. So in this case, we connect idea one with idea two with and. So we're just adding, it's like extra information. This and this. He finishes work at 6 and we're going to go to dinner at 7. We can express our two things to do, our two ideas, in this way. Okay, um, let's see, I'm looking for some examples. Nahora says, I finish work at 6 but I'm going to stay a little longer. Ah, in that case I might say, I usually finish work at 6 but today I'm going to stay a little longer, maybe. Okay. Oh, Facebook. I'm trying to check. There's some ads. Uh, okay. Cesar says, my, Cesar, Cesar, hi, says, my sister finishes cook. Maybe my sister uh, finishes cooking at seven and we're going to go to the theater at eight. Make sure we're going to go to the theater at eight. So my sister finishes cooking, cooking. Okay. Mm, some of you are writing cooking. Rosa says, my mom finishes cooking. Make sure my mom, the activity is cooking. Yeah, the verb is cook, to cook. Yeah, so my mom finishes cooking at 5 p.m. and we're going to go to food. Or maybe we're going to eat at 6 p.m. I'm not sure. Um, Miguel says, I have an appointment maybe at the dentist or with the dentist. We can use at or with there. I have an appointment with the dentist at 2 p.m., so I'm going to go at 1.30, okay? Uh, Juan says, the mall opens at 10 a.m., and it takes one hour to get there by bus, so I am going to leave home at 9 a.m. Nice sentence, Juan, okay. Uh, all right, 
Some person, I'm not going to read your sentence because this is a little different topic, but you cannot use I will going to. I will going to is not correct. I will or I'm going to, okay? All right, let's go to the last point here. Here's a negative. I put a negative. So the bank closes at 3 p.m. The bank closes at 3 p.m., but I'm not going to finish work until 6. The bank closes at 3 p.m. Here's my simple sentence. The bank closes at 3 p.m., but... So I'm showing uh, the other side of something. I'm not negative. I'm not going to finish work until 6. I'm not going to finish work until 6. So this sounds like I cannot go to the bank. I have work, right? So we connect these ideas, this negative idea also, with but in this case. So this is the basic way to create a long sentence by putting two ideas together, okay? So the last point I want to make about this is a punctuation now. You can see this mark right here in all of these sentences, yeah? This comma, yeah, this little mark. So use a comma, this mark, use a comma before the coordinating conjunction if the parts on both sides are complete, simple sentences, okay? So why did I put this note here? So in today's lesson, we need a comma in all of these because we have a simple sentence here before the conjunction and a simple sentence after, right? So in these cases, we have to use a comma right here. I put this note here because sometimes we use these words, but we do not use them to connect our sentences. In those cases, we don't always need to use a comma, okay? But in this kind of structure, in this kind of pattern, we do. So to check, just look at your conjunction, look at the word, check the part before. Is it a simple sentence? Is the part after a simple sentence? Then yes, you need to use a comma, okay? All right, so this is part two. So how do we combine our ideas? This is the most basic way to put two ideas together in English, okay? Cool, um, all right, I'm gonna look at your question. Ba -ba -bum. Luvina, the school finishes. Ah, school finishes. School finishes at 3 p.m. Don't need the there. So I'll probably go home. Okay. Um, he, Ritesh says he is playing game. Maybe he's playing a game um, till 6 p.m. And he is going to join us at 7. Nice one. Okay. Uh, Botir says the taxi leaves at 9 a.m. So I'm going to go to. I'm going to go to the taxi station at 8.30. Um, <laughs> Varganet says the businessman is talking at 7 p.m., but the employees are not going to listen to him. Be careful, you got to make sure you don't forget those little words. The employees are not going to listen to him. Good, <laughs> okay. Uh, some other examples are coming uh, on Facebook. Um, Let's see, William, uh, I don't eat today, but tomorrow I'm going to eat at 7 a.m. Maybe past tense, I didn't eat today. I didn't eat today, uh, but tomorrow I'm going to eat at 7 a.m. Maybe, I'm not sure what time of day it is. At the end of the day, you would say, I didn't eat today. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you, if, it's, uh, if you're in the morning in your time zone, maybe I won't eat today, but tomorrow I'm going to eat at 7 a.m. Phew, okay, let's continue on. Time's going quick. Let's uh, go to part three. Just very quickly, if you missed it, the team has a level check test uh, in the link below the video on YouTube and above the video on Facebook. So if you're looking at today's points and you're like, wow, I'm missing some things, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, you can go to our website, englishclass101.com and check Take the level test. It is free there. Just make a free account and you can access it and check uh, the recommendations for the levels uh, and the pathways on our website. You can find a bunch of videos that I've made <laughs> about many of these topics. So let's go on to part three because time is going quick. Okay, so I want to finish today with an appointment expression section. And then we're going to finish by putting all of today's information together in one short sample, okay? So appointment expressions. I want to talk about a couple of very easy appointment-related expressions. So 
These expressions are for using with staff usually. So staff at a restaurant, at a hotel, at an office, and so on. These sound polite, okay? So, can I make an appointment for blah, blah, blah. Can I make an appointment for something? Okay, so this for dot, dot, dot is here because we can finish this sentence in many different ways. We can use uh, a day and time. Can I make an appointment for Monday at 2? So day and time. Can I make an appointment for day at time? Is one way to finish this sentence. Can I make an appointment for next month? So very open time. Sometime next month. Can I make an appointment for next month or next week or next year? Maybe. <laughs> or can I make an appointment for a haircut? So the action, what do I want to request? I can finish this sentence here. Can I make an appointment for a haircut? Can I make an appointment for uh, teeth cleaning? These kinds of activities that we do at the office, we can request. Can I make an appointment for a health check, please? Mm. We can finish with this specific activity. And we can also use a person. Can I make an appointment for my son? for my roommate, for my daughter. So to make an appointment for someone means you, so I am going to make the time, decide the time, but the person who is going to come to the appointment is that other person. So can I make an appointment for my son? So it's my son's appointment, okay? So we can use many different patterns to finish the sentence, yeah, okay? And I want to point out this, uh, these two, uh, and then I'll go to a note. So the next expression is, I'd like to make a reservation. I'd like to make a reservation. So this sentence is like a question, right? Can I, right? A request. Can I make an appointment? This one is a statement. I'd like to make a reservation. We use this one on the phone. Uh, a lot, or just to be very direct, maybe in person, I suppose, but usually on the phone with like a restaurant. Hello, I'd like to make a reservation, please. So we use this kind of to start a phone conversation, usually at a restaurant or cafe, this kind of situation. And one more point about reservation. So we use this expression. The reservation is under name or the reservation is under my name. Okay, so what does this mean? So, imagine, call you call the restaurant. I'd like to make a reservation. Uh, and they say, okay, how many people, what time, blah, blah, blah. What's your name? All right, so what name can they use for the reservation? In my case, I say, oh, Alicia, right? So, I say the reservation is under Alicia, or the reservation is under my name. That means, the reservation, like details, are connected to my name. So please say my name when you arrive there. We use under in this case. We always say this. The reservation is under name. So it could be your boss or your friend or your family member. We use under in these cases. All right. Okay. So ooh, the next point I want to talk about, common question, the difference between appointment and reservation. What is the difference here? Basically, they're the same idea, the same concept. We have a time <laughs> and a place for something, right? But we use appointment like in office situations, yeah? So like the doctor's office or the dentist's office, at a hair salon, uh, for an apartment or a real estate agent, right? So there's some, usually like an office we go to and talk to someone, have a meeting with the specialist there. This is what we use appointment for. We make an appointment to do that. Reservation, on the other hand, reservation we use for hotels, for restaurants, maybe for rental cars, for entertainment equipment. You can think of reservation as like something you, you have to uh, keep like a room or you have to keep an object, keep equipment or something for your use. With an appointment, it's kind of like you come to a space to talk to someone, yeah, or maybe learn something from someone. With a reservation, you have to like keep a seat or keep a table for yourself, right? Or keep a car, reserve a car, right? 
So we use reservation more in these cases and appointments are like for time and place. Mm. So if that's helpful, a reservation is kind of more for, for some object we need for ourselves. Yeah. Okay. So this is how we use appointment and reservation. Mm. All right. So time is, oh, I'm late as always. So <laughs> let's go to the last part. Let's put all of today's points together to express schedule and a request for a meeting time kind of casually. Okay. So let's finish with this today. Let's break this down. My flight arrives at 10 a.m. and I'm going to arrive at my hotel at about 11.30. So can we meet around lunchtime? Can we meet around lunchtime? Here I've used can we meet. This is a casual way to ask for a meeting. This can we meet is one we use with people we're close to, our coworkers, our friends, and uh, just maybe other people acquaintances, business colleagues. So this sounds more formal, like uh, staff at a restaurant. Can I make an appointment to meet with you? Sounds a little distant, someone we don't know well. Can we meet? Sounds like someone I know. Maybe I'm text messaging this person. Can we meet around noon? Can we meet around lunchtime? Okay, so this has all of today's grammar points in it. My flight arrives at 10 a.m., simple present tense, coordinating conjunction, and I'm going to arrive at my hotel at about 11.30. Simple future tense sentence. So, I have this, can we meet around lunchtime? So I've connected, yes, my simple sentence with my question, can we meet? We still have a subject and a verb, right? We can still use the same coordinating conjunction rule, okay? At native speed, this is very fast. If I'm on the phone, I might say, mm, my flight arrives at 10 a.m. and I'm gonna arrive at my hotel about 11.30, so can we meet around lunchtime? This is probably how a native speaker would say this sentence, okay? But this is how we express all of these ideas quickly at one time, okay? So I hope that this lesson helped you to break down how we put the grammar points together and how we connect the ideas and make our appointment and scheduling requests too. So this is one example how we put all of this together in a very natural uh, and I think smooth and pretty casual way too. Okay, great. So I have to finish up there because I am late. I talked and explained too much as usual, but I hope that it was helpful for you. Okay, so I have to finish up for today. I see lots of people are saying hello. What's up everybody? Um, but Let's see, I see lots of people just saying hello. Hello from Indonesia and from Tashkent, hi. <laughs> okay, I have to finish for today, but if you want to take a picture of today's lesson boards, today's lesson boards are right here. All right, so today we talked about simple present tense and simple future tense, how we put these grammar points together, yeah? The differences. Then we talked about connecting sentences. Today we talked about how to make the most basic form of long sentences uh, with two simple sentences together, yeah? And last, we talked about appointment expressions and the difference between appointment and reservation and how we can put all of today's information together to make one long sentence that expresses our schedule and makes a request at the end. Whew, that was a lot, but I hope that it was helpful for you. Okay, so that's it for this week. Next week's lesson information is right here. Okay, next week, I'll be back, of course, Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is New York City time. If you don't know your local time, please use your Google skills. That will be, yeah, Wednesday, July 20th. This year is going so quickly, right? Next, uh, I'm going to talk, next time I'm going to talk about how to fix mistakes apologize and promise changes. So what do you do when you made a mistake? <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to talk about in next week's lesson. How do you fix? How do you say I'm sorry? How do you talk about how things will be different in the future? Very important skill to have, I think. <laughs> so this is our topic for next week's live lesson. I hope that you join me for that. So I will say goodbye for this week. Thank you as always for joining. Thank you for liking and sharing the video. Uh, thank you for your great questions and your great comments. Please make sure if you want to do the level check test, you can find this from the link below the video on YouTube, above the video on Facebook. If you want to find me on social media, on Instagram, on Twitter, you can find those links in the YouTube description too. So enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy 